Let's get started. The first two steps in using online grant portals are 1. Know where to find them and 2. Create an account. Grant portals are often found on the grant funder's website, often by a hot link using the word apply or apply now or something like that. The next step is to create an account for your organization, not for yourself, though you may be the primary contact. Let's move on to my top five pro tips for success with grant portals. Pro tip number one, download a copy of the grant proposal and all the required forms and complete them offline. My personal practice is to create an offline template in a Word document that is shared with the staff and or board members who are involved with preparing the grant proposal. Pro tip number two also relates to the process of creating that offline template. Grant funders place a lot of optional fields in the online grant portal which pop up based on your answers to yes, no, or multiple choice questions. Every time you see a question on the grant portal that asks yes or no, click yes to see if more questions pop up. Then click no to see if more questions pop up. On multiple choice questions, click each answer to see if more questions pop up. Record any of the additional questions that pop up onto your offline grant proposal template to remove any surprises when it's time to upload and submit the proposal. Pro tip number three, one more essential component in creating the offline template. Be sure to keep track of limits placed on how many words or even characters are permitted for every answer. Here is an example of how it looks when the answer is longer than the space allotted for it. How do you count words and characters? In Microsoft Word and in Google Docs, highlight the text you want to count, then select these options. In Microsoft Word, there is a quick link in the lower left corner of the screen. In Google Docs, it's in the drop-down menu under Tools in the upper left corner. Finally, another personal practice is to make a little note after each question to indicate whether my answer fits in the allotted space or not. Pro tip number four, make sure the files match the funder's requirements. This refers to A, file type, and B, file size. File type restrictions can mean, for example, that your proposal's project budget is written in Excel, but the funder wants it in PDF form. The portal is programmed to not accept the Excel file. Or, some grant funders want you to take all of the extra documents, such as the grant attachments, and scan them all into one document in the order they require and upload that single document. File size restrictions tend to come into play when you have very colorful, highly produced documents such as an annual report or your organization's program guide. These documents might be rejected by the grant portal in their original size, so I listed three links in the description below to free resources to help you reduce the size of a file while retaining the content. And the final tip, pro tip number five, submit the proposal before the deadline. Back in pro tip number one, I suggested that you should save the use of the portal for uploading the complete proposal. Well, now it's time to do just that. This may be easier said than done, but do all you can to submit the proposal before the day that it is due, even one day before. Why? Three reasons. One, despite your best efforts, there may be a surprise question, or the answer doesn't fit, or some other mismatch that means more time to contact someone for the answer or rewrite a portion of it, etc. Number two, these grant portals see a lot of traffic on deadline day, which makes them prone to crash. Number three, once you're ready, be sure to hit the, the submit button. You are done. Nice work. See you in the next video.